because the reason for you coming out here, as you mentioned, you, uh, you've been a, a long time in this background supporter for uh, Dad Talk Today. Mm -hmm. And um, usually if people are supporters or, or follow Dad Talk Today, it's because they've had some experience with family court, they've had some experience with divorce situation. Is that your case? Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I feel sorry for anybody who has to go through that, uh, especially in this country. A lot of uh, me prior to, you know, to dealing with all of that, I was gung ho. You know, America's the best country in the world. They would never do anything like this to people. And then and then you go through it and you see how corrupt that entire side of, of our country is and how bad they, they treat fathers. And it's it's mind boggling to me. It, it really changes who a person is in the way that they look at the rest of their life in, in the place that they are when they have to go through something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, my case was, was really unreal. I, it, at least I thought at the time. Uh, typical, you mean? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, <laughs> you know, it, it, when I started going into this, I was thinking, oh man, this is horrible. You know, I mean, the, the, it's just me. And then you start to talk to other people like people from Dad Talk Today, and yeah. you hear the exact same story over and over and over and over again. And and then you start to realize, okay, well, let, let's let's look and see why this is happening because the, people can't just be evil for no reason. You know, there's got to be there's got to be a benefit in there at one point. And so then you start following the money and you look at that and you realize stuff like um, uh, family court, uh, more money changes hands in family court than all other courts combined in the United States, yeah. which is yeah. insane to me. Yeah. You know, and, and then the other side is you got to look at that one when, when you're going through that and then the judge will automatically say this is a closed court case. We don't want anybody else to hear this because safety of the children. And it's that's not the case. They're, they're literally doing it to hide their crap that they're doing. You yeah. know? There's a couple of things with, with, with regard to that. I've talked with a couple of ladies whose husbands have gone through family courts. Mm -hmm. Ladies come from Colombia. Yeah. And they said, we used to think Colombian courts were bad. <laughs> and now they're like, it's not like family court. No. And it is a, whether you call it a mafia or, car or cartel, a racket, I don't know what you want to call it. But, you know, Judge Judy talked about family court being the dumping grounds for morons and something else at one point in time, <laughs> political, political hacks. hacks. Or something yeah. like that. So, I mean, th those are not my words. Those are Judge Judy. Yeah, but words. it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Flat out. I mean, I mean it, it's it's crazy to actually sit back and think about that because why would it be this way if there wasn't a lot of money in it? And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, for instance, it's a, it's a $60 billion a year industry in the United States. Um, the average is between 85 and 87 percent of divorce cases in the United States. Um, the mother gets full custody. E either we got to look at that and say, OK, well, that means that only 13 percent of mothers are bad, you know, or you know, only 13% of fathers are good, or maybe 13% of the mothers are actually in prison. You know what I mean? The, 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 well, the, the other thing is among that 13%, that does not mean only fathers, because there can be others within that. So when you come down to the fathers getting full custody, it's even less than that figured, at least in Texas it is. Yeah, it, well, and that's why I was saying that on a national basis, I think that's what it is. And I, I could be wrong. Um, right. But it, at the same token, nobody's gonna sit here and tell me that, that only 13% of fathers are good. Right. I mean, we, we, we all know our neighbors. We all know the people that we associate with every day. I mean, it, we, we can't sit back and say that 87% of them are bad. Who can actually look at that number and say, this is real, 87% they're, they're are bad? You know? And yet, and yet if there's a crisis or we need something or there's an emergency, we call upon the very same people that are supposedly bad. Right? I mean, you know, it's... But, but what I wanted to ask you about is because your, your perspective was a little bit different than what I've heard because it's not just the family court that you had to deal with, but you were actually getting something changed in your own life from the past. And I was wondering if you'd be free to share some of those details just, just to show what goes on. Okay, so in my personal case, I actually won in family court. This was in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Um, the judge had ordered in family court that I got to reunify with my kids after being alienated for about three years. Um, as soon as that happened, my uh, ex-mother-in-law filed a, uh, uh, a, what's it called, a, a dependency case in juvenile court, which supersedes family court. At that exact same time, I, well, I was convicted of a felony when I was 19 years old. It was a class six felony, the, the lowest that you can get. At that same time, I was going through the Superior Court mm -hmm. in Arizona and doing, you know, the FBI background check and everything else to make sure that that I was good for that judge to 
change that felony from a felony to a misdemeanor and restore all my rights. Mm -hmm. So I had a court that actually goes by the law, a superior court, you know, that people can see, unlike juvenile or family courts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that judge actually thanked me for being a good uh, contributing member of society and changing my ways and everything and removed that felony, turned it into a misdemeanor. He didn't expunge it, which a lot of judges will expunge it, which means you still have a felony, just people can't see it. He didn't do that. He said, no, we're going to turn that into a misdemeanor because you should have never gotten this felony in the first place, mm -hmm. you know, which was a huge thing. While that was going on, I had the juvenile court that I was dealing with with my ex-mother-in-law fighting for my kids. They were saying that I'm an unfit parent. I shouldn't be around children, you know, all based on false ag accusations. No, I mean, there was there was no proof on anything at all whatsoever in that court. Um, as they were removing my children from me. Wow. And at the same time, now, if, if I got this correctly, your former uh, mother-in-law also was retired CPS? She, well, from what my ex-wife said, yes, she worked with CPS. And on top of that, my ex-father-in-law was the parking garage manager at the courthouse on top of that. So, 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 so they knew how to do certain things and that they were on first name basis and so it, like there was one point during the the proceedings where we had a little recess in one of our court hearings me and my lawyer walked outside um you know to to discuss some things when we went back in you know after the break the judge had gotten off the bench and was sitting at the table with my father-in-law talking about the U uh, university of arizona football game that they had just went to yeah. and my lawyer looked at me and said uh, um doesn't it feel like you just walked into a family reunion? And I said, absolutely it does. And I said it loud. And the judge looked at me, got up and went back to his bench. Wow. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that stuff, you know, so, so what you're saying is it's not in family courts, you know, the family court judges say, well, we want to have discretion. But really the discretion oftentimes is I'm a good friend with this person. We're on a first name basis. She may even contribute to my campaign, may host parties for me when I'm when I'm running for judge. At least in Texas, it works this way. And um, the you know we you know there, there's a really nice relationship there. So I'm going to favor her. Yeah. I'm not looking at at justice or rightness because to begin with, family law, constitutional rights, justice. Forget about all that. Wait, stuff. There's no such thing in family law. There's no such thing as constitutional rights. There's no such thing as any kind of justice. It's it's who has the deepest pockets that they can take from. Um, we we can look at Title Four D and Title Four E. You know, all we want to look at that, and and we can say, okay, well, no matter what, if you can remove one parent, usually the father, because you know, well, fathers usually make more money. As sad as that is. Um, if we can remove one parent, we can get the child support as high as possible. And a lot of people don't understand what Title IV uh, D is, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is whatever a state orders in child support uh, over the entire state, the more money that they actually collect out of that, money is taken out of the Social Security Fund and handed to that state as free money. Mm -hmm. um, so the problem that we have that a lot of people don't understand is they are actually funding this. People who have social security taken out of their paychecks every two weeks or whatever it is, they're actually paying for what is happening. Yeah. And, and the more people that understand that and start realizing that, the more uproar there is, is like, okay, well, why, why is this happening? That's why it's happening. There's yeah. too much money in it. Yeah. So, and it's the other thing that's interesting is with this and uh, because social security is supposed to be providing certain benefits, <laughs> but what are, the way our social security is running, there are fewer and fewer people supporting the, uh, the need that people have for the benefits. Yeah. And what we're doing at the same time in family courts, when we're taking a parent out of the child's life, we're basically almost guaranteeing that they are going, not guaranteeing, but there's a higher probability, likelihood, that they will not be a productive citizen who will be a tax contributor. They, they will fill the prison systems. They will you know, have criminal records more, more often than not. Um, there's more likely to be abuse. There's more, I mean, all of these numbers when you remove the father or even the mother, you right. know what I mean? If you remove one of them out of there, that's taking 50% of what that child needs to grow up. One or the other. It doesn't right. really matter which one. Um, and we see that. We see that in juvenile records. We see that in, in uh, um, children that grow up and, and they say it's a deadbeat dad problem. Well, how can it be a deadbeat dad problem when we're not even allowed to be dads? Yeah, that, that's a very you know, good point. I mean, absolutely. You got to look at that and say, well, 
why, why don't we have this 50-50 shared parenting as the norm? I understand if there's abuse, there should, one parent should be out of there, right? right. That, that, that we can see. Which leads to the false allegations and the silver bullet. And exactly, which, which there, sh there should be actually a court of law, not a kangaroo court like family court. Right. You know, uh, it, it should be proven. There's, you know, there should be steps taken to actually show that there was something that happened instead of just being able to say it with no penalty of perjury and you know anything along those lines i mean my my ex-wife lied on the stand over and over and over again we, we even I, I even hired a private investigator and busted her um eight separate times on stuff that she had done judge didn't care he didn't even want to look at it yeah. and 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 the private investigator that i hired was a retired uh um, sheriff uh, uh deputy sheriff after 32 years on the force so how could a judge look at that and say, well, he's got to be making this up or doctoring photos or anything like that? The judge didn't even do that. He wouldn't even look at it. You know, I mean, the, the decision was already made before that, you know, before it was over with. There, there was a predetermined outcome. But I wanted yeah. to say something that you mentioned because, you know, I look at government policy, these family courts. They are the ones that are creating the epidemic of fatherlessness in many instances, not everyone, but in many instances.